Hey nurse family, nurse Erica here. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to administer a subcutaneous injection. If you haven't already, be sure to go ahead and check out my how to administer an intramuscular injection and how to choose the appropriate needle size and syringe for IM and sub-Q injections. For the purpose of today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to withdraw medication from um, an insulin syringe and administer that, as well as how to withdraw heparin and administer the um, heparin, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna wanna do is go ahead into my medication administration record because that's where I'm going to see my patient's med orders, okay? So I'm currently in my MAR and I'm looking at the patient, Zach Morris, and I'm looking at the date of birth and I'm looking at what's ordered for this patient. So the first thing that I notice is that um, I just checked the glucose and the glucose was 250. And based on my provider's order, they have a insulin sliding scale. And for a blood sugar of 250, they want me to administer four units, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and grab my insulin. I'm gonna do each one separately. So I'm gonna grab my regular insulin. I'm going to grab an insulin syringe, okay? I always use an insulin syringe when administering insulin because it's going to come in units rather than milliliters. What I should tell you about this is that this syringe is a one milliliter syringe, but again, it comes in units and it's a 29 gauge needle, that's the diameter of the needle, and it's half an inch long, which is an appropriate needle length for a subcutaneous injection. So everything is all together here. I don't have to choose any needles, everything is together. The next thing I'm going to need is my alcohol, one for the patient and one for my vial, and a gauze. And for the purpose of my sim lab, I'm going to be using this little injection pad to demonstrate how to inject a subcutaneous um, injection. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is um, check my medication and make sure that I have the appropriate medication for what the provider has ordered. And so in this case, I do have my um, regular insulin and it's not expired and it looks good. It should be clear, regular insulin should be clear, okay? And I know that I want to administer four units. So again, you don't technically need gloves to withdraw medication, but it's something that I feel more comfortable doing and this is just part of my practice. So what I'm gonna do first is clean my vial. Now, in a lot of um, injections that you're going to be given, you will be using different needles to withdraw the medication and then to administer the med, okay? But with insulin, it is okay to use the needle that is um, in the syringe. So notice that my insulin insulin syringe has an orange cap and that's a way of making sure that we don't make a mistake and use the wrong syringe and there is my half an inch needle you know this is very short okay because i'm not going into the muscle i'm going into the subcutaneous tissue okay so what i'm going to do first is i know that i want to administer four units so i'm going to go ahead and put the plunger down, bring the plunger down until where I get to four units. Okay, I'm going to put the needle into the vial and inject my four units of air. The next thing that I'm gonna wanna do is invert my vial. Now you wanna be careful because the um, 29 gauge needle is very fragile, so it can bend very easily. Now what I'm gonna do is hold it at eye level and withdraw my four units. And in some facilities, you will need a second nurse to witness this to make sure that you are administering the right 
dosage of insulin. I'm going to go ahead and scoop up my cap. And now I'm ready to go to my patient's room. So I'm going to have my alcohol, my gauze, and I'm going to my patient's room. Okay. Hi, good morning. My name is Erica. I'm going to be the nurse taking care of you. Can you tell me your name and date of birth? Okay, Zach Morris. And your date of birth matches as well. All right. So um, I'm going to administer your insulin now. Your blood glucose was 250. So based on the sliding scale, you're due for four units of insulin. Okay. So you'll be... Um, You'll want to make sure that you eat when the, the breakfast tray comes around, all right? Are you familiar with signs of hypoglycemia? If your sugar um, drops, are you familiar with signs and symptoms? All right, that's great. Yep, I know you've had um, diabetes for a long time, so you're, you probably know more than me, right? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give you the four units of insulin. Would you like it in the back of the arm or in the abdomen? In the back of the arm okay that's great so now I'm getting ready to administer the medication now remember that with insulin you can use any of the appropriate subcutaneous sites which would be the back of the arm which is the fat of the arm the adipose tissue the abdomen okay two inches away from the umbilicus and you could use also the um, the thighs as well as the upper glutes although those last two sites are not as common okay Mostly we use the back of the arm and the abdomen. So in this case, my patient has requested that I use the back of the arm and that's totally fine. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is scan my patient and I'm going to scan my medication. And I'm gonna do another check and make sure that this matches Again, I'm going to administer regular insulin. My blood glucose was 250, I just checked it. And based on the sliding scale, I'm gonna give four units of regular insulin, and that's what I have here. And so I'm using my insulin syringe, and I have four units of insulin here. All right, so everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and push my patient's gown down, or bring my patient's gown down. My patient no longer needs the blood pressure cuff, so I'm gonna remove the blood pressure cuff. Gonna have the patient just relax their arm. I have my alcohol and my gauze. Okay, so remember I want the fatty part of the back of the arm, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab and I'm cleaning it with my alcohol. And while it dries, I can go ahead and grab my gauze and just get it ready. Sometimes you don't really need a gauze, but um, I just thought to bring it just in case. I'm gonna go ahead and take off my cap. Okay. So and remember then. that when you're going to administer the sub-Q injection, you wanna hold the syringe as if you were holding a dart. And you don't wanna just push it in slowly, you wanna kind of dart it in. Not forcefully, not painfully, but just start it in so that you make sure you hit that adipose tissue, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch my skin. I'm going to inject my syringe or my needle at a 45 to 90 degree angle. And I'm going to then secure my um, syringe and inject. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and inject that medication. Okay, I'm gonna remove that. I'm going to activate my safety and put it right into my sharps container. Okay, so I wanted you to see what that would look like if I was going to actually be administering to a real patient, but I also wanna show you how that looks in the injection pad. So I have my syringe and needle. I have my alcohol, I'm gonna clean my site. 
And remember that for sub Q, you're gonna go 45 to 90 degrees based on how much adipose tissue you have. And in most cases, you will be pinching the skin, okay? So with the IM injection, remember that sometimes you're gonna be holding the skin taut. In most cases with the sub Q, you're going to be pinching the skin. So I'm gonna go ahead and you're gonna feel a little pinch here and dart my needle. And now I can release the skin. I can go ahead and add, um, push the plunger down. Now, if you're not too comfortable, you should be securing your syringe and needle, okay? But if you are comfortable, then you don't really have to. I'm gonna go ahead and withdraw it and activate my safety and put it into the sharps. Now, the big thing that you need to remember is that you're never going to rub, okay? I'm never going to rub insulin. So all I'm going to do is apply a firm pressure if it's needed. If there's any kind of blood or anything, I'll just apply a firm pressure. But in most cases, there's no blood, and so you'll be able to just leave the patient, okay? So I'm going to finish my documentation here. And update my chart. Now, the next thing that I want to administer is heparin. This patient is receiving heparin prophylactically to prevent blood clots while they are immobile and they're in the bed, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and check my order. And it says heparin, 5,000 units, sub Q. And so I'm gonna grab my heparin. And I have a 5,000 unit um, vial here. My concentration is 5,000 units per one milliliter. So I'm going to withdraw one milliliter. All right. And now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my supplies. And so for the purpose of this um, injection, I'm going to want to use my one milliliter syringe. And I am gonna use a blunt needle this time. So if you notice with the insulin, we use the insulin syringe that already had the needle. With heparin, heparin can be irritating to the surrounding tissue, okay? So I'm going to wanna to use a blunt needle. And a blunt needle is appropriate for withdrawing medications or specimens, but not for injecting into the patient. Because look how big this thing is. It's very thick, and it's also not, um, it's not meant to pierce the skin, okay? I'm going to need two alcohols, one for the vial and one for the patient, and a gauze. And I also need my subcutaneous needle. And so in this case, I chose a 5 8 inch needle and it happens to be a 25 gauge needle. Okay. Alrighty. So first thing I'm going to do is clean my vial. While that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and pull my plunger down to one milliliters. So my plunger is down to the one milliliter, okay? I'm gonna remove the cap. I have my vial facing upright. I'm gonna go ahead and inject the air into the airspace. Now with heparin, heparin usually comes in a very small vial and they give you just enough. At least that's the one that I get in my facility. It's just enough heparin. So you really wanna make sure that your bevel is in the fluid line so that you're not getting air. A lot of times when you students are getting a lot of air, it's because your needle is not in the fluid, it's in the air space. So you're gonna wanna go back again. Okay, so I have my one milliliter of heparin and I'm ready to go to my patient's room. So I have my alcohol and my gauze and my medication because I'll have to scan that. Okay. Hi, I'm back again. Um, the provider has ordered heparin, which is a, a blood thinner. It's an anticoagulant medication. We use it to help prevent any blood clots since you're not moving as much as you usually are and you're in the hospital you are prone to um, getting blood clots, so that's why we wanna administer this heparin. It'll be um, a subcutaneous injection and it goes in the abdomen. 
okay? Um, you should know that if there's any um, signs of bleeding, any abnormal bleeding that you notice, just go ahead and, and let me know. You can ring the call bell and let me know, okay? Some other things that you should be doing, though, is moving as much as you can, moving your feet and moving your legs, maybe marching your legs in the bed, moving around. And um, the provider has said that by tomorrow morning, we will be able to get you out of bed. So we'll have you um, work with physical therapy, okay? All righty. So... Um, can you confirm again your name and date of birth? Okay, Zach Morris, that matches and your birth date also matches. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and scan your bracelet. And I'm going to scan my heparin. My expiration date is good, my liquid looks good, and I'm going to check my medication again, and I see I have my heparin 5,000 units per one milliliter, so I wanna administer one milliliter. Everything checks out. All right, good. So I'm gonna grab my gloves. Now heparin should go in the abdomen, okay? The only time you will not administer heparin into the abdomen is if you are, um, you know, if your patient had some kind of procedure done, um, that limits you from doing that or in some cases I've had patients that had really believe it or not no adipose tissue and so I had to go into the um, the thigh but it should be administered in the abdomen okay so I'm going to go ahead and um, change my needle so I'm going to discard my blunt needle and put on my 5 8 inch needle Notice that it's a lot smaller than the intramuscular injection needle. Okay, so I'm going to lift up your gown so that I can um, see your abdomen and give you your um, injection, okay? Now, remember that it is important that whenever you are going to be administering injections, especially something like heparin or insulin that's going to be given multiple times, that you wanna rotate the sites, okay? So here I'm using the left side of the abdomen. When I go to document this medication administration, I'm gonna let them, you know, I'm gonna document where I administered it. And you know, as a nurse, you're always assessing your patient. So you're gonna look at the abdomen and if you notice that there is bleeding or there's any kind of bruising or um, just anything that shouldn't be there, then you're gonna to try to use a different site or maybe another side of the abdomen, okay? All right, so again, I'm gonna remove my cap. I'm going to pinch my skin of the abdomen and I'm gonna go 45 to 90. I'm gonna go ahead and dart. And if I need to, I can secure my syringe and go ahead and administer my medication. 10 seconds per milliliter. So here I have one milliliter, so 10 seconds. And then I'm gonna hold it for a count of 10. I'm gonna remove my hand, withdraw my syringe, and activate my safety. And I can go ahead and apply firm pressure and this goes right into my sharps container. How was that? That wasn't too bad, right? All right, good. So there's no bleeding or anything noted, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring the gown down. Make sure I'm not leaving any caps behind in the bed. I have everything I need. Make my patient comfortable. Remove my glove. And remove, get rid of all my garbage. Perform my hand hygiene and give my patient the call bell, and I'll come back and reassess in a little while. All right, so that's how you administer a subcutaneous injection. I showed you two different sites that we commonly use, so hopefully that makes things a little bit clearer for you. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them down in the comment box. Bye-bye.